while we've had decades of research looking at the broader gender and media agenda, especially looking at issues of representation and consumption, there has been rather less research on working practices, careers and promotion within media industries themselves. One of the first efforts to document and analyse the specific issue of women in decision making in the media was commissioned by UNESCO and reported on as Women in Media Decision Making, The Invisible Barriers in 1987. In her introduction to the book, Margaret Gallagher commented that men's attitudes, beliefs and even organisational procedures showed a surprising degree of consistency across the countries. Successive research over the following two decades showed more or less the same kinds of patterns, finding that despite the numbers entering the industry, women advanced their careers unevenly compared to men, often doing better in larger organisations. In 2011, the International Women's Media Foundation published the findings from its study of women's employment in news companies, which covered 59 nations and 522 organisations. A headline finding was that men held 75% of both top management and board positions. Women's presence was strongest in routine news gathering roles and weakest in technical roles such as camera and creative direction. In 2013, the European Institute for Gender Equality published the findings from its study on the same topic, focusing on the then 27 EU member states and Croatia, and surveying 99 large-scale European media houses. That study found that of nearly 3,500 senior positions which were coded, 30% were occupied by women. When you look a little closer, you see that 16% of CEOs were women, as were 21% of chief operating officers demonstrating that although women are occupying positions of authority, they are much less likely to be in positions of power. Where women are successful in achieving senior positions, they are more likely to be working in public service broadcasting, more likely to be working in service-oriented departments such as legal or human resources. These studies are important not only because of their findings, but because their comparative scope and geographical reach. National studies are often dismissed because of the specificity of the socio-cultural context, but where cross-cultural studies show similar trends and patterns, they command more credibility for the suggestion that something is happening which is structural rather than situational and requires explanation. I suggest that there are any number of factors in play at any one time in any one media organisation. But the point is that these factors are universal. They simply exert more or less influence in different ways at different times. Factors such as routine gender-based discrimination, workplace harassment, poorly implemented, sometimes non-existent gender equality policies, and informal promotion processes all serve to produce a working environment that does not support women or their career aspirations. While some studies have provided slightly more optimistic findings, the general trend shows little significant progress over time. Even in studies where improvements have been noted, they have tended to occur in individual countries or individual media organisations. But the most recent scholarship shows that progress for women into decision-making positions remains painfully slow. <laughs>